Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. We're going to start out with the Dow Jones Industrial crossed over the silver price, and you can see the extreme difference we've been following this chart for a long time. Uh, they're still moving apart now with the Greek vote, uh, a resounding no. Uh, will that bring this down? Well, it should. Uh, right now, the futures are trading at about there, 17.4. Let's go and check those. So the Dow's down 1.24% and the futures down 219 points to 17,430. So this is, again, I've said this many times, this is the market they want you to be in because this is the market that they can evaporate at a moment's notice. And this is the market that they don't want you to be in because they really don't have any control over it except for a fake paper price that isn't even really real. So let's look at the initial reactions of the vote. Let's get down to the one minute chart. This is the euro. And if we go back, you can see the last news I pointed out. What happened was uh, a gap down and then the central banks intervened and actually reversed it. Then it came down to the direction it was trending in and you can see it looks like the central banks are intervening again because they're constantly manipulating currencies and all prices. Now we've seen with the recent scandals of JP Morgan and Citibank and their uh, positions in the futures markets, we know that they're manipulating every market on earth. So the reaction is important. You can see it was an initial sell-off in the euro, but now we're getting a rally. It wouldn't surprise me if we saw a repeat of what we saw the last time where they rallied, actually rallied into new highs. The reaction in gold is somewhat muted. There's a little bit of a rally uh, up a little bit. And the reaction in silver is even more muted. You can see silver barely budged. It had a big zigzag here on the open. You can see it ran to 1576, crashed to 1560, and now it's leveling out. That's not surprising considering that silver is the most manipulated market on earth. Now, uh, we didn't really see any activity in the other markets. The dollar crude oil is down below 60, but didn't really react to that vote. The Japanese yen uh, took a little drop down there, you can see that uh, it strengthened against the dollar initially when the news started to come out and now you can see central banks are again intervening to and, and this is you can see this trend has been going on a very 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 long time the the federal reserve and probably the european central bank uh, whatever banksters are involved in all this stuff they have been weakening the japanese currency significantly for a very long time so will this trend continue? At some point it has to reverse because they're just absolutely destroying Japan. But we don't know when that's going to happen. So you can see this little fight here again um, where the central banks are coming in and trying to reverse course from what the market would normally do. Now, if you remember the last time I pointed out that we had a big move in the cryptocurrencies, we actually got the same thing tonight. It was actually on the leaking of the, or the early projections, I should say, of the no vote in Greece. We had this rally coming from about 260, Bitcoin rallied to about 274. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good rise. Of course, that's nothing compared to Litecoin, which moved from about four bucks to five bucks. So that's a 25% gain in Litecoin. Very, very interesting. Same pattern that we saw before. Why are the cryptocurrencies actually showing the most reaction to these things? Well, they're probably only the real mar only real markets left on Earth. And so they're reacting. Again, I think that it's probably the Chinese. If we pull up the Litecoin uh, Chinese Yuan, you can see a decent amount of volume coming in. But uh, we've rallied, we've tripled since uh, May. So what is this referendum about? What, what are the Greeks actually voting on? You can see here that uh, 
the headlines, Greek government wins decisive bailout vote victory. So they won a decisive victory. I guess the vote came in at about uh, 61% for the no vote. Well, what were they voting on? That That's a good question. That's that's one that everybody's asking. Well, we know they're, you know, they voted no. Well, what did they vote no to? And here's the article. Just what exactly are the Greeks voting on this weekend? The question is complicated and everyone is arguing about what the answer will mean. So what is the referendum all about? I know that Greece is holding a crucial referendum this weekend, but beyond that, I'm really confused. What is this vote about? Well, you're not alone. Earlier this week, the Council of Europe, a leading human rights organization, said that the short notice combined with the, very, with the complexity of the question could make it hard for many Greeks to understand what they're being asked to vote on. Phew, I'm glad it's not just me. What's the question then? To answer that, it's probably best to back up a little bit. For months, the Greek government has been negotiating with its creditors. Greece wants to get its hands on the last of its bailout funds and for the country's debts to be reduced. The creditors have said that Greece can only have the money if it needs if it makes a number of reforms to its economy, which boil down to raising taxes and cutting spending. But debt relief is a no-no. The argument therefore boiled down to the reform proposals. For months, the gap between the two sides was enormous, but it started to close a bit in recent days. Then last Friday, Mr. Cyprus broke off talks and called a referendum. Essentially, the question being posed is this. Should Greece agree to the proposals for reforms being demanded by creditors in order to release the bailout funds, yes or no? But I thought you said the reforms haven't been agreed. No, they haven't. What's more, as soon as Mr. Cyprus called the referendum, Greece's creditors pulled the deal. What's even more, the Eurozone bailout program ended on Tuesday night, so Greeks are being asked to vote on proposals that no longer exist to release funds from a bailout that has expired. So, what is this about? Well... We know that Greece, I said from the very beginning, when they elected these communists, this Cyprus and very fakus, that they would do nothing. And the reason why I said they do nothing is because they were elected on a platform of reforming, or I'm sorry, of rejecting austerity, which means that the Greek people had decided that they were not going to put up with any more cuts. But the thing is, is that still to this day, even though there have been some minor, minor reforms and probably just the juggling of books, to tell you the truth, the employment rate of government employees is still 700,000 out of a population of 7 million. Now you tell me why you need 700,000 people working for the government out of a population of 7 million people. Now think about that. If you think about if it's anything like the United States, then perhaps 50% of those are either children or retired or whatever. So really you're talking about 700 million out of a possible workforce of say 3 million. So you're talking 20, 25% of the workforce works for the government. So this is what happens when, as Margaret Thatcher said, you run out of other people's money. Greece long ago ran out of other people's money. Now the other people are demanding reforms for them to get more of that money. Now I said from the very beginning that Greece wouldn't walk away and I calculated the numbers. The numbers indicate that even if Greece's debt were completely zeroed out at today, and they owed no debt whatsoever to anyone, they would still not be able to balance their budget, even if they had no interest payment. Now, we went into that looking at their interest payment and calculated the interest rate on the bonds and what they were paying. But as it turned out, they really weren't paying anything because the payments had been deferred. So even though 
Greece would have very high interest rates on their debt if they were paying payments on their debt. Since the payments are deferred, it doesn't matter what the interest rate is. So Greece is unable to really make any payments on that debt at all. And they're just uh, looking to get more bailout funds. That's what I said from the beginning. That's why they can't leave the Eurozone. Although, as I said from the beginning as well, that's precisely what they should do. What they should do is they should tell uh, the Troika and the IMF, and especially the IMF, they should immediately default and not pay any, tell, tell the IMF that they are declaring that debt null and void. That would be the first thing, even if they didn't say that to the ECB. They definitely should say that. And then to the Troika, they tell them, no, we're, we're zeroing out this debt. Now, people have said, well, then they'd be kicked out of the Eurozone. Apparently, they can't be kicked out of the Eurozone unless they agree to be kicked out of the Eurozone. But then at that point, what they should do is move to another currency. Now, they could move to an existing currency. They could just start using someone else's currency within their borders. Uh, that happened in Zimbabwe. Or they could reissue the drachma. Or they could start using gold, silver, and cryptocurrencies. Now, it's very strange to me, the reaction of the cryptocurrencies. You can see that uh, Litecoin is still rallying in China and Bitcoin is still strong. So there definitely appears to be a connection here between a potential Brexit and a rally in the cryptocurrencies. Is it possible that a country like Greece could maybe decide to issue or endorse or begin to use some cryptocurrency we don't know what one it would be or perhaps they would issue their own we don't know but the market seemed to be voting that the the less confidence there is in the euro the less confidence there is in the ecb the more confidence there is apparently in cryptocurrencies now i don't believe that buying in greece and europe i think we can actually find the market to check uh, well, this is BTC Euro, um, and I don't know if that's the most volume for a Euro exchange. Probably maybe BTC E, their BTC Euro cross. So you can see here not a lot of action coming in from the European side of things. Um, here's Kraken. That's I think that's a Chinese exchange. Okay, so there we have decent amount of BTC Euro volume coming in. So that could be correct. It could be that Europeans, Greeks, perhaps people in Italy, people in Spain, people in France, perhaps they're buying Bitcoin, beginning to diversify out of the Euro and uh, go into the crypto cryptocurrency. So that definitely is a potential factor here, although it's uh, very unusual. So back to the Dow chart, this is the one that we're watching very closely because this is poised for a potential catastrophic crash. We're not there yet. You can see we're still around um, the support uh, on a very, very sharp uptrend line. You can see, you can draw it in multiple places. It's an extremely sharp uh, trend line. And that, of course, almost all the time portends a crash. So will the Dow open up down significantly Monday? Probably. If the pattern follows, we'll probably see new lows in silver. And we'll see the Dow completely erase its losses. And we'll probably see the euro actually go into new highs. That's if all the patterns follow the, the way they've traditionally done. Does that mean anything to us? No, not really, because the same, the same pattern is, is being followed by them, so we have to follow the same pattern. Uh, it's very clear. The only thing you can do at this point, if this is coming to America, and I really believe it is coming to America, what happened in Greece, is that you keep stacking physical, you keep 
socking away cash in case they close the banks. You get the preps that you need and uh, you dabble if you want to in the cryptocurrencies because at some point this thing is coming to the United States. It may be it comes to the whole world at the same time that it comes to the United States or it may be that it uh, is like a series of dominoes like Lindsay Williams described. Something brings down Europe and then Europe brings down America and then the whole system collapses. And we'll talk to you next time.